am leaving. I exclaimed. Fine. And don't come back, my wife answered. Usually I d say go to hell when I walked out the door. But today I didn't want my last words to her to be so uncivilized. We have exchanged similar words many times throughout our 14 years of marriage, but I always came back. But not at this time. In a few days, she will understand what I meant this time. Over the past six to seven months, Jenna, my wife, has become more and more verbally abusive. I didn't understand what was happening. Her snide remarks were, to put it mildly, caustic. I started avoiding her as much as possible so as not to make the situation worse. Every day I lingered longer and longer in the car. Sometimes I even returned home after Jenna and Carrie, our 13-year-old daughter, had already eaten dinner. I had to look after myself. Sometimes there were leftovers. Lately, however, I think they've ended up in the bin before I get home. My name is Kurt Kaminsky. Technically, my name is David Kurt Kaminsky, but my father's name is David too, so they started calling me Kurt from the beginning to avoid confusion. No, I'm not a junior. My father's name is David John Kaminsky. Why he didn't make me junior, I can't imagine. I would be happy to be called junior or even DJ. But no, I would be called either Kurt or nothing. Yes, I'm Polish. Well, actually an American of Polish descent. Yes, I heard all the jokes. Well, maybe not all of them. They seem to come up with new ones every year. As the only person of Polish descent I know, other than my father, living in this small town of about 10,000 people, I have become the butt of many jokes. Technically, I'm only half Polish. The other half, on my mom's side, is German, French, Irish, and English. But since my last name is Kaminsky, I am Pole. My wife, soon to become my ex-wife, is not who I thought she was. I only found out about this four weeks ago. As I said before, I was spending more and more time away from my wife due to her abusive relationship. After returning home without dinner several times, one Monday evening, I decided to grab a bite to eat at a local restaurant. I was sitting in a booth, ready to order, when I heard two guys talking in a booth on the other side of the partition. My attention was drawn to a phrase that contained the word pole. I listened and heard one of the men. So how long have you been entertaining the polis wife? Since they got married. In fact, I had sex with her on their wedding day. And he didn't know anything. I didn't recognize the first guy's voice, but I recognized the second one. It was my best friend, George Carey. I sat stunned. They continued talking, but I heard nothing more until I heard George say yes. We get together and have fun at least twice a month. Kurt is so busy in the parking lot that he doesn't even know what's going on again. Well, stupid. Just then the waitress came up to take my order, and I said quietly, I am sorry, I have to go. I left, heading away from their booth so they wouldn't see me. I could not believe it. My wife Jenna was my best friend. He was even the best man at my wedding. He is also my mechanic and will be for some time to come. He's not really my mechanic because he's officially an independent contractor that I use exclusively to repair and inspect all of my cars. If you haven't already guessed, I own a used car dealership. Yes, I'm a used car salesman. I also heard all these jokes and insults. However, my business is very good. People know they will get a great car at a good price. They also know that I am responsible for my cars. If problems arise, I take care of them. George has always been a good mechanic and I keep him busy and pay him well. I wanted to hire him but he said that won't respect himself if he has a pole as a boss. He said it jokingly but I knew he was serious. Regardless, I hired him as my independent mechanic contractor, although he was not very independent. In fact, I was his only source of income. This fact will be his death. I left the restaurant and drove around the neighborhood.
Could this be true? I asked myself. Ori just pouted. They could have hired a private detective. But if what he said was true, then they only met twice a month. This may turn out to be a waste of money, but what I could do was check her phone and email. This is exactly what I decided to do. I returned home and Jenna was as out of sorts as ever. This suited me. I didn't want to talk to her until I found out the truth. After she went to sleep on her side of the bed, I got up and checked her email. There was nothing suspicious there. Her phone was password protected, but it didn't take me long to determine that our daughter's date of birth was the code. I saw a few messages that could have been taken the wrong way, but none from George. His name was on her contact list. But then again, he was my best friend so it wasn't unusual. Maybe he was just talking out of his ass, I thought. However, her behavior lately has made me think that something must be happening to her. Maybe not with George, but with someone else. I went to bed and tossed and turned, trying to sleep. It happened sometime after 02 43 a.m. Because that was the time the clock was on the last time I looked at it. The next day at the car dealership, George came and joked about the polls. This wasn't uncommon for him. I usually just laughed a little and then let it die. Today, however, I lashed out at him. George, what do you even know about Poland? I bet if I laid out a map of the world, you wouldn't even be able to point to it. You joke that all Poles are stupid, but I'm sure they could point out the U.S. and maybe even our state on a map. Why don't you get to work? George looked at me and didn't know what to say. He knew that I was right. He could not indicate Poland if his life depended on it. George was never one of the book smarts. He was good looking. He had street smarts. He knew a lot about engines. But he had never been a college student. I think that's why he hung out with me in high school. I helped him with his homework so that he could at least finish school. Now I've started to rethink my choice of friends. He made me think about choosing a wife. I went into my office, closed the door, and began to think about how I could get evidence of what might be happening. I couldn't stand up to both of them. They would just deny it. I needed proof. I called a private investigator in Santa Fe and told him my concerns. He said, given that this only happens twice a month, it would be too expensive to monitor them. You could install a beacon on your wife's phone. At least you'll know where her phone is whenever you check it. You can also install cameras in your home. But unless you buy really good cameras, and by good, I mean expensive ones, they will most likely be found. Even with expensive cameras, if your wife is aware of her surroundings, she will probably notice something different. I think if I were you, I'd put a tracker on her phone and hope to catch them at a motel or something. I received his recommendation for a tracking program and told him I would send him a check for all his help. I didn't do anything. You don't owe me anything, he said. All the information I gave you could have been obtained on the internet. Well, I asked you for an examination, and you provided me with good information, so expect a check in the mail. If you're ever in Silver City, stop by Kaminsky's parking lot and say hi. I don't usually go to this part of the state, but if I do, I'll look for you, he said. And I knew he was serious. Part of the reason I was successful in selling cars was because I made people feel valued. I learned early on that people need to feel that who they are and what they do matters. I looked at tracking software and decided I could at least do this. Then he looked at the camera and felt that he was right. He saved me money, time, and the hassle of purchasing cameras, which I had no doubt Jenna would notice. That night, after everyone had gone to bed, I got up and downloaded the tracking app on her phone and synced it with my phone. It will work in the background without her knowledge. That night, I slept more peacefully. The next day at work, I checked the app periodically. She worked part-time in the university bookstore. She only worked 15 to 20 hours a week. 
She called the money she received mad money and spent it on whatever she wanted, usually going to the salon later. I checked, and she was at the grocery store later still. She was home. George was home most of the day. But when Jenna was home, he was at work. So at least that day, I was sure nothing had happened. That evening, I decided to try to be more polite to my wife and daughter. When I asked if they wanted to go to Reveal to eat, my wife seemed to react a little better. Carrie, however, was a typical 13-year-old girl. Unsure if she wanted to see her parents, I insisted, and she reluctantly went to the car. Dinner was pleasant. I didn't fail to mention George in the conversation, and Jenna looked away, but quickly changed the conversation when she saw me looking at her, which increased my suspicions. I would like to know if what George said is true. I needed to figure this out somehow. That evening, I didn't check her phone. I had no luck checking her calls or messages. So she either deleted them immediately or didn't make them at all. As I got into bed, I said to Jenna, Thank you for coming to dinner today. Thank you, Kurt. It was a pleasant surprise. She looked at me and said with her gaze, You might be lucky today. It's been a while and look, like I said, we haven't been getting along very well lately. Jenna finished her nightly preparations in the bathroom and lay in bed cuddled up to me. I had mixed emotions about possible sex with her. If she cheated on me, did I want it? I decided that until I had proof, I would let her initiate and reciprocate. I wouldn't take the lead. In the end, we did have sex, but it was very vanilla sex. No need to go into details. Well, at least I had fun for the rest of the week. I checked the location of her phone and didn't see anything unusual. On Saturday evening, when she was already asleep, I checked her phone for messages or calls and again found nothing. I was close to convincing myself that George was lying through his teeth trying to impress some guy with his sexual exploits. This was not the first time I knew this since school. I went back to bed and tossed and turned again. My subconscious wouldn't let me sleep. It was two in the morning, and I was lying there staring at the ceiling, unable to sleep. So I got up and went downstairs to get something to drink. I hope this helps me sleep. I sat with a glass of Jack Daniels and a Coke in one hand and her phone in the other. Then I decided to check her phone again. I entered the password, my daughter's date of birth, and opened the phone to her homepage. And then it hit me like an electric shock. Our daughter's date of birth was the key. The pregnancy was difficult. In fact, we thought we were going to lose her. Several times during the pregnancy. Something about her RH didn't match my wife's try. It felt like my wife's body was fighting with the baby inside her. In fact, for the last three weeks of pregnancy, my wife was on bed rest so she could carry the baby to term. She really carried her to terminal, and exactly nine months after our wedding, Carrie was born. We were so happy she was healthy, but she was a difficult child. She cried constantly, didn't get enough sleep, didn't want to put her hands on Jenna's chest and whatever. It was difficult with her. My wife and Carrie's second year told me in no uncertain terms that we weren't having another baby. It depressed me, but honestly, the baby sucked all the joy out of our lives. I mentioned that she was born nine months later. These children are called wedding night babies because they are conceived at night or during the honeymoon. A light went on in my head. If what George said was true, then there was a strong possibility that Jenna was already pregnant. Before our wedding night, Jenna took the pills? No. We didn't wait until we were married to have sex. In fact, it was the majority of our time together. The doctor, when asked how Jenna got pregnant, said that the stress of the wedding probably affected her hormones and made the pills ineffective. Well, if the pills weren't effective that night, they weren't effective that day. Now I know what to do. There was a 50% chance that I was not the father. You know the expression, the early bird gets the worm? Now, George might have been an early bird. 
However, I think that in his case, the, the expression should look like the early worm gets the birdie. I got up from the couch and went to the bathroom. There, he found some cotton swabs and went to Kara's room. Now she was fast asleep. She finally switched to a good sleep schedule when she turned four years old. Up to this point, she had had a hard time. She lay there snoring with her mouth open. It was easy for me to take a Q-tip and run it along the inside of her cheek. She didn't even wake up. After placing this in a plastic Ziploc bag, I repeated the process for myself. If it turned out that Carrie was my biological daughter, it would still leave me with questions regarding Jenna's fidelity. If Carrie wasn't genetically mine. Well, I'll think about it later. Sunday was housework day, and we each had our own responsibilities. I took my time with them to limit my exposure to Jenna or Carrie. I had a hard time containing my emotions, so I didn't want to give anything away. I was eager to find out the results of my suspicions, but at the same time, I doubted this thought haunted me all day. Jenna asked me, Is something bothering you, Kurt? I needed to come up with something quickly, so I replied, I want to buy a large number of cars at the next auction to fill my lot. This means money will be tight until I can make a few sales to make up for it. Well, don't overexert us, she said. She always said we went talking about the business, which I guess was good because she felt it was ours. But in fact, when I opened the car park, I registered a company to limit my liability. We live in a religious society, and I didn't want anything I did in business to negatively impact my personal life. I think I'm going to pay off the credit cards and cancel all but one so our credit looks a lot better. I told her this was a ploy to explain my plans to prevent any possibility that she might screw me over financially if and when she found out about my plans. Whatever you think needs to be done, she said dispassionately. This idea came to me in the blink of an eye. It's amazing how your mind can work if you let it. This would limit the possible consequences if what I expected turned out to be true. So early Monday morning, I took my samples to Western New Mexico University and talked to someone in the science department. They referred me to the head of the department. He told me that they had a core program in cellular and molecular biology and that they would be happy to do it. I gave him some of my business cards and told him that he or anyone who worked on the samples would get 10% off the purchase. He seemed to appreciate it. I was thinking about replacing my Camry with a newer car. I may have to stop by and take a look at your selection. If you don't see anything you like, just let me know and I'll work with you to find something you like, I told him. Thank you. I'll do that, he replied. I know I smiled when I left the university, but it was a concerned smile. The results could have been the end of my marriage. When I told Jenna about buying new cars to fill my lot, it was only to hide my worried expression. Now I thought, this isn't a bad idea. I called Paul, my accountant, loan officer, and part-time salesperson, into my office and told him about my idea. We will succeed, he said. Paul, there's something else I'd like to do. I would like to pay off the mortgage on my house. Can we agree on a lump sum payment so I can do this? Let me take a look at the financials and get back to you. After lunch, as he left my office, I thought about calling my lawyer and asking for a referral to a family lawyer. Then I thought, you may be in a hurry. Let's see what the results are first. After all, I have yet to find any evidence that my wife was having an affair. After lunch, Paul showed me the spreadsheet and we discussed next steps for both of my plans. The next two days were some of the longest. I was on the verge of death while waiting for the DNA test results. Late on Wednesday evening, the head of the department called me. He was coming to us with the results and to look at the car when he arrived. I directed him straight to my office. He looked at me and the look on his face told me what the results were. Then he spoke and confirmed it. The two samples collected are not related to each other. I nodded my head and he could tell that although I had expected it, I was devastated by the news. He gave me a minute to think it over and handed me a manila envelope with the results. 
When I looked up at him, my expression changed. So what car were you thinking about? Well, I know this sounds cliche, but I just turned 50 and I'm looking for a sports car. I was thinking about the Mazda Miata. I told him that I did not have such a car, but that I was going to the auction the next day and would try to find one that was in good mechanical and cosmetic condition. I'll call him this afternoon and let him know what I found when he left. I told Anna that I'll leave early, but if you need me, I'll only be a phone call away. I knew she wouldn't call. She rarely needed me. She could handle almost anything that needed to be done. I drove around the city just watching. Strange, but for me, everything looked different. Then I called my lawyer. He was saddened by the news, but referred me to another lawyer who he knew would do the right thing. After calling, I made an appointment for late evening. The next day I had a snack at a restaurant and thought, well, I was, have I really wasted the last 15 years of my life? I couldn't even say that I even had a child from this marriage. Of course, I still considered her, to some extent, my child. But biologically she was not. What should I do next? I knew I couldn't act like I didn't know anything. Of course, I wasn't ignorant before, but now that I knew, there was no turning back. One thing I knew for sure, George would pay. I didn't care that he had been my best friend for years. With friends like him, I could use more enemies. Jenna will pay too. I wonder if she knew Carrie wasn't mine. Even if not, she hid this secret from me. The secret of her sex on her wedding day with my best man. My best friend. Now I had no reason not to believe what I had overheard. She had fun with him at least twice a month. I started to feel angry, and before I got out of control, I needed to be alone, away from everyone. I should have called Jenna and told her I wouldn't be home that evening. I couldn't go home. I would most likely do something that would land me in jail. She answered the call. Hello? Kurt? Hey! I'm going to spend the night in Albuquerque so I can be ready for the auction at 8 OU, I said emotionlessly. Oh, uh, fine. Bon voyage. I don't usually go to Albuquerque for auctions, so this was unusual. I wondered if she would take advantage of the fact that I would be gone all night. She would have to blame Carrie on my parents and it would be difficult to explain. However, I will periodically look at her phono tracker throughout the evening to see if she has decided to go somewhere else. I followed the roads to Albuquerque. I wanted to buy at least 20 cars, including a Mazda Miata. I would arrange to have them picked up and sent to my lot after the auction is over. Now the question in my head was who to entrust their mechanical inspection to. I knew that George would not get any more work from me after his routine inspections and machine repairs were completed. When he hears that I bought two dozen cars, dollar signs will appear in his eyes how much he can charge me for all this work. However, this will not happen and I will keep it a secret until the last minute. I needed to talk to one of the local auction dealers to see who would be good enough and reliable enough to inspect them before shipping them to our small town. I got to Albuquerque around 09.00 a.m. and checked into a Best Western Hotel. Even though I was the owner, I could not allow the money for an expensive hotel to be divided from the company's accounts. The room was comfortable, as was the bed. That's all I needed. I am a simple person with simple needs. When I entered the room, I immediately checked Jenna's phone tracker. I discovered that she was still at home. Or at least her phone was at home. That night, sleep was difficult. I kept going over in my mind why she did what she did. How could she justify having sex with him on our wedding day, let alone twice a month for who knows how many years? I began to reconsider our marriage. He was never perfect, but I thought we loved each other exclusively. Now I know that this was a mistake on my part from the very beginning. In the first few years after the wedding, things were not easy. Of course, we weren't expecting a baby right away. We originally planned to wait three to four years and then start a family. 
Three children is what we agreed on before the wedding. However, the fight with Carrie ruined these plans. When I found out that these plans were ruined by my best friend, all the struggle began to seem in vain. Fourteen years of wasted effort. There had been good times, of course, but even those were now overshadowed by this news. If Jenna hadn't had sex with George, maybe she would have gotten pregnant with me and maybe she wouldn't have had such a bad pregnancy and difficult child that made her not want any more. George ruined my life when he seduced my future wife on my wedding day. Now he entertains her at least twice a month and I'm sure that all the time he laughs at the ignorant pole. He must pay. I thought to myself, lying down and trying to sleep. I was furious again. I needed to calm down, otherwise I wouldn't be able to sleep. I turned on the TV to some mindless comedy show. Laughter helped me calm down and by 11 souk I was ready to fall asleep. Looking forward to a long day. The auction went well. I got some great cars at great prices and got to know some dealers in the Albuquerque area. I didn't see any Miatas at auction, so I started asking other dealers. Two of them had one each, one red, the other black. I asked them if they would be willing to make a deal once I found out what color my client preferred. Of course each of them said, just let me know what cars are on your lot and we'll get it done. I should have come to this auction more often. Communication with other businessmen engaged in the same type of business inspired me to expand my business. Besides, it distracted me from my problems. In the afternoon when I met with the lawyer, the news was not very good. I will lose half of all my property and will have to pay alimony and child support. Child support for a child that wasn't even mine. Then I decided that I would not get a divorce. Instead, I'll leave her with George's baby. I would pay off the mortgage on the house. She could have stayed in it, but my name was the only one on the mortgage, so she couldn't sell it. If I moved out, but continued to pay taxes and utilities, she wouldn't be able to resign and take the house. However, I had to decide what to do with my business. It was registered as a corporation, but somehow I knew that if I didn't do something to protect it, I could lose it. I needed to talk to my business lawyer about this. When I walked through the door of my house, I was exhausted from a long day. So I said to Jenna, I'm tired, going to take a shower and go straight to bed and went to the bedroom. Do you want to have dinner? She called me. No, I had a late lunch, I answered. At least she thought to ask. The shower was wonderful. It felt like my problems almost melted away. I had problems, but I was on my way to solving them. I fell asleep a few minutes after my head hit the pillow. I had been stressed for the past week, and now that I had started making a plan of action, my mind could rest. Waking up early and feeling refreshed, I headed to the office before Jenna and Carrie even woke up. I had things to do and even more plans. When my staff started arriving, they found me knee-deep in spreadsheets, financial reports, and sales forecasts. I told Paul that I had purchased 23 cars and that within a week we would close the deal on the car at the dealer in Albuquerque. I told Anna not to assign any more work to George, but to keep it a secret. She looked at me with a puzzled expression. You are the boss. Thank you, Anna. You are irreplaceable. At Nina, I called my business lawyer and asked him what I should do. Well, your business is registered, but there may still be a way she can force you to sell it to get half of its value. Have you thought about selling it beforehand? No. Do I need it? This will keep the business out of her hands, he said. This business is my life. I can't get rid of it, I told him. Okay, let me think a little and study the situation. I'll call you at the end of the week. This news was devastating. I have worked hard to build my business into what it is today. This is my child. Unlike Carrie, I thought to myself now I was filled with rage again. Part of being a good business person is the ability to compartmentalize and multitask. 
I needed to put my personal problems aside and get back to business. First on my list was to call Doug, the department chair, who determined that what George said was true. Doug? Kurt Kaminsky. I have information about two Miatas that might interest you. One is red and the other is black. Are you still thinking about it? Yes. If the price is right, he said, what color are you interested in? I'll bring it here so you can look at it, and then we'll discuss the numbers. Even if we can't agree on a price, I'm sure I can sell it without too much trouble. And which one would you suggest? He asked. Each has its pros and cons. Firewood is a great statement killer, but it fades faster. Black looks elegant, but in our climate it gets hot quickly. Let me ask, will this car be kept in a garage when you are not using it? Yes, I can do it. Then the red won't be exposed to the sun much, so fading won't be a problem. I'd go with this. Unless you think black is more your style. Red sounds great. How soon can I see her? Is Monday or Tuesday suitable for you? Of course. Call me when you receive it. Fine. I hung up and called the dealer who had the red one to arrange a trade. He became interested in the BMW on my property. It had been there for three months. He would have had a better chance of selling it in a big city. By this time George arrived. He had several cars that still needed to be repaired. Being an independent contractor, he could come and go as he pleased. And as long as the job was done. At the time I needed the car, I was fine with it. He overheard several salesmen talking about 23 cars that would soon appear in our warehouse. He looked into my office. Hey, Kurt, when are these cars coming from the auction? I want to make sure I have a schedule to do this for you. The auction house will arrange for their delivery here. It will be sometime at the end of next week or early next week. I told him it was difficult for me to talk to him calmly to this damn trader. Okay. I'll contact Anna and ask her to put me on the schedule, he said. I just chuckled to myself as he left. That weekend I tried to keep my distance from Jenna. I worked in the yard and ran a lot of errands. Didn't even check her phone tracker. For me, it no longer mattered. I felt only contempt for her. The fact that I was raising someone else's child was unforgivable. On Monday, I was at the car show again. I called the dealer in Albuquerque and told him I would drive the Beam Rover and pick up the Miata. He replied, Great. We'll have a late lunch when you arrive. It was a good day for a trip, so I told Anna that I would be gone all day. Hold the line, I told her. Okay, boss, she replied. She truly was irreplaceable. I need to give her a raise. I told myself the trip was pleasant, as was the lunch. The other owner made me feel welcome. And I felt like I had a new friend. On the way back, driving the Miata, I really enjoyed myself. The top was down and the wind was ruffling my hair. I decided that I would call another dealer and get a black car. I needed to live a little in. Jenna looked out the window and must have said something to Carrie because they both came out to watch. Honey, why do you need this car? You know we need something with a back seat for Carrie, she said condescendingly. I just picked her up from Albuquerque for a client. Thought you might want to ride it, I replied. No, honey, I don't like small cars, Jenna said with slight contempt. Carrie, I said, motioning for my daughter to sit down. No, Dad. I feel bad enough that they tease me because of my last name. I don't want to be seen driving around with a polished used car salesman. She said it like only a teenager could say it. I was stunned, to say the least. Where did this disrespect come from? When I looked at Jenna, I realized that she was acting as if Carrie had done nothing wrong. Great! Now both women in my house are disrespectful to me. I know teenagers aren't supposed to be best buds with their parents, but the hurtful way she said it made me look at my entire family life as a sham. 
Well, I'm going to go for another ride. It'll be back as soon as I can, I said, putting the car in reverse and driving away. I drove along the roads of Silver City and its environs fired up. My marriage was rapidly deteriorating when I finally pulled into the driveway at 930. I immediately went upstairs, hopped in the shower, and climbed into bed. When I didn't come down from my shower, Jenna got up and came into the room. The light from the corridor shone directly into my eyes. I squinted and closed them. What? Are your feelings hurt because we didn't choose a sports car? Aren't you going to come down and spend time with your family? You are not only a pole, you are also a child. Where did this attitude come from? I had to believe it came from George. She spent time with him, and his stripped-down attitude towards my roots rubbed off on her. Now she is passing it on to her daughter. It was her daughter, not mine. I guess I should get that into my head. I may have to support her, but she is not my daughter. It looks like you and your daughter would rather not have a pole around, so you might as well just fuck off. I was furious, and her attitude wasn't helping her one bit. She'll regret ever treating me the way she does now. Needless to say, from then on, the Kaminsky house was quiet and cold. The next day I called Doug and he came to check out the Miata. He was delighted. We talked the numbers over and he was surprised at what a great price he got $3,000 less than Kelly Blue Book when he was about to leave, having filled out all the papers. He, my best friend, is in charge of purchasing for the university, and we change 16 cars approximately every two years. I know it's not much, but could you talk to him? Always happy to do business, and you know I'll make a deal with them. I said, I'll ask Jim to call you at the end of this week. Thank you. I said, that's how I grew my business, by treating people right and letting them know I valued their referrals. On Wednesday, my lawyer called me. Hey, Kurt, I think I have a solution to your potential problem. Could you come by this afternoon to discuss it with me? Of course. I can't wait to start. The atmosphere in my house is becoming simply unbearable. At a meeting that day, I heard the plan and liked it. It will take about two weeks to implement, but if it works, it will be worth it. During these two weeks, I slowly moved personal belongings and tools from my home to an apartment in a nearby city. Also during those two weeks, George was anxiously waiting for those two dozen cars to arrive to do some work that he could bill me for when he asked. I just put it off. This past weekend, I did some yard work, and when Jenna and Carrie were in around, I cleaned out my closet and drawers. Jenna did laundry during the week so she could do what she wanted on the weekends. This was good for me because she didn't notice that my closet was empty. So this takes me back to that Monday night. When I said to Jenna, I'm leaving. She started being rude and disrespectful to me again, both as a pole and as a used car salesman. In the past, I would go to a motel for a night or two, depending on how angry I was. On the Tuesday morning after this explosion, I arrived at the parking lot early, and as my employees were entering, I asked them to go to the conference room. I closed the door behind them. I had weekly meetings, so this was nothing unusual. I started the meeting. Good morning. As you all know, the cars that I bought a couple of weeks ago arrived yesterday afternoon. All of them have already been checked and prepared, so they are ready for sale right now. We no longer use George to do any work here. If he asks you, tell him we decided to go in a different direction and leave it at that. You've all been amazing. You're like family, so it's hard for me to come to terms with what's next. I paused and wiped a tear from my eye. I sold the business. They all looked at me. There was surprise in their eyes. However, nothing will change as far as your work is concerned. Well, besides Anna, you will perform some of my duties and, of course, will receive a corresponding increase. All of them, even in their surprised state, began to congratulate Anna. They all respected her and knew she deserved it. Anna, 
After the meeting, please come and talk to me. We will discuss some things. I will still be involved in the company, but only on an advisory basis and may sell occasionally. I don't want to take away your sales. They were all glad that I would still be around, at least sometimes. The meeting ended, and as we walked out the door, George was standing there. Hey, why wasn't I included in the meeting? He had been present at most of the previous meetings. Because it was a staff meeting and you're not an employee, I said. He stuttered a little and then said, I see that the cars have finally arrived, so I'll get to work on them right away. No, they have already been carefully examined and prepared for sale. You don't need to do anything with them, I said sternly. He looked at me, stunned. But I will check all your cars. Kurt, what's happening? George, I sold the business, and the new owner wants to move in a different direction, I told him, not ready to explode at him. I'll save that for another day. I left everything as is. It became clear to me that sometimes it is better to say fewer words. I can't believe you sold the business. He exclaimed. What should I do now? Of course it was all about him. He was basically told that he was out of work. Well, I said, you can pick up your check for what you did in the last two weeks. It wasn't that much. Anna used his services only a few times. He was relaxing before delivering 23 cars, thinking he would be busy when they arrived. How wrong he was. I didn't feel sorry for him at all. I just wish I could tell him that it was because he was a mean asshole. When I met Anna, I asked her if she could keep our conversation a secret. Of course, Kurt. You know I'll never say anything you don't want, she assured me. Okay, here's the thing. I created companies that I registered in Nevada. One of the companies buys this parking lot, the other buys that company. I am the sole owner of shares in both companies. At some point I will divorce Jenna and make sure she doesn't get the business. Why? She asked. I moved out of my house. Jenna doesn't know it yet, but I'm not going back. She had an affair with George. Actually, Carrie is not my daughter. I believe she is George's daughter. I don't even know if Jenna knows about this, let alone George. They'll soon find out. I'm not going to get a divorce, but I will continue to pay utilities and taxes for our house. This way she won't be able to say that I abandoned her and take everything I have just in case she files for divorce due to irreconcilable differences. I don't want her to be able to take over the business. That's why I agreed that the company would be bought twice. Let them try to figure out what's going on. The proceeds from the sale will be spent by the time she gets her divorce done. Plus, I make next to nothing from consulting and a few commissions from sales. Anna, you are able to cope with daily operations. I'll be available to call if you have any questions. But let me say that I trust you and I trust your judgment. The smile came back to her face when I told her about the new owner. But when she heard about Jenna and George, she looked like she was ready to shoot someone. This was a woman whom I truly admired and respected. I, I have one more task for you and then I will leave you. I need you to order a new sign and letterhead. We are changing the name of the business. This will further cement in George and Jenna's minds that the business has been sold to someone else. The new name of the business will be Helpless Car. I spelled the name so I knew she had it right. She looked at me in bewilderment. Someday I'll tell you why I chose this name. Suffice it to say, it tells the whole story, I said. She still looked puzzled, but she trusted me enough to follow my instructions. With that, I left, saying a few words to everyone. As I left, I got into my car, an Audi, and drove down the road towards Albuquerque. About two hours passed when I received a call. Caller ID told me it was Jenna. I didn't expect her to call before the end of the evening. This has happened many times before. When I left, I'd go away for a day or two. She'd call, we'd talk, and I'd come back. 
Everything changed for a while and then we became the same again. After a while we would have a quarrel again and the cycle would start all over again. I decided to answer the call, waiting to hear what nonsense she would spew this time. Hello? I said through the speakerphone in the car. Kurt, what's going on? She said somewhat hesitantly. Nothing. Just going to Albuquerque. Why are you going there? To pick up the car, I said without emotion. So what I heard must not be true. So George must have called her. Figuratively speaking, call your mistress to find out what is happening with her husband. I don't know, I said. What did you hear? George called me and said that you sold the business. Why would he call you? I asked, perplexing her. She corrected herself. He's your best friend. He wondered if I knew what was going on. Best friend? What a joke. I was a joke to him. The stupid pole is helpless and does not know what is happening behind his back with his own wife. Apparently my family was embarrassed that I was a used car salesman. So yes, I sold the business. Now you won't have to bear that stigma anymore. Shouldn't we have talked about this first? She said, I'm sure she was worried about how we would live now. This is my company. I owned it before we got married and I can sell it whenever I want. I just hope the new owner treats my former employees well. So did you get a good price for it again? She was worried about how this would affect her standard of living. I didn't care. I just knew I needed to change jobs. It'll start looking after I take a few weeks off to relax. What about a mortgage? She asked. Oh, I used the money to pay off the house. You don't have to worry about that now. You just need to pay utilities and taxes. What about food? What about gas? What about insurance? She said, almost hysterical. Oh, I guess I'm a stupid pole. I didn't even think about them. Do you think you could take on more hours at your job? Now she was excited. When are you going to come back home? This is the moment of truth. I won't come back, I said casually. What I told you that evening that I was leaving. You told me not to come back, so I won't come back. Don't worry. I'll find a way to pay all the utilities so the power won't be turned off. You can't do this, Kurt. You must go back. I heard the desperation in her voice. No, I really don't want to, I said dispassionately. Kurt, don't do this. She cried. I did it already. What about your daughter? She asked, trying to tug at my heartstrings. You mean Carrie? The girl who is ash of it of her last name and the fact that her old man is or was a use of car salesman. Kurt, she's just a 13-year-old girl. You can't take this to heart. Well, it doesn't matter anymore. I won't be back again, so none of you will be embarrassed of me. With these words, I hung up and turned off the phone. Let her think about it. I knew that now she was trying to call me back and would be angry that I wasn't answering the phone. After calming down from the phone call, I tried to enjoy the leisurely drive to Albuquerque. I could only assume that the next call she would make was to her lover to get more information and to let him know what I had said. When I got to my destination, I turned my phone back on and saw that I had five messages. I listened to them, all three from Jenna, one from George, and one from Anna. I immediately called Anna. Hi, Anna. Sorry, my phone was turned off. I have had unwanted calls. Yes, I know. Your wife and George called me to find out where you were. I told them you don't own this place anymore, so you don't come anymore. Hope everything is okay. Great, I said. If they give you too much trouble, tell them you're calling the police about phone harassment. I like it. She said, Kurt, you may feel like you don't have any family or friends anymore, but trust me, you don't. We are your family and always will be. Thank you, Anna. 
You know what to say. I hope your husband knows how lucky he is. Trust me, he knows. He constantly tells me about this. Never lose this. Don't take each other for granted. I'm not going to, she said. After hanging up, I wondered if I should call my cheating wife or this asshole. No. Let them rage. I got out of the Audi and went into the parking lot office. The owner was waiting for me there. I have that Audi that I told you about. Would you like to discuss if we can make an exchange? Let's see, he said he was impressed with the condition of the car, both inside and out, as well as under the hood. He looked at me. I can sell it in a week. Are you sure you want to make an exchange? I feel like I'm getting a better deal. You can reciprocate sometime in the future. I'm not here to make money. I'm here to get a sports car. Half an hour later, I was back on the road, top down, enjoying the ride. Now I had to decide where to go. North sounded good, so I headed to Santa Fe. Over the next two weeks, I traveled through northern New Mexico, Arizona, southern Utah, and Colorado. I wanted to be nearby in case Anna needed me to come back. I called her several times, and when it became clear that she had everything sorted out, I decided to head west. Of course, they kept calling me. At first, they were annoyed, then apologetic. And finally, there were notes of bitchiness in them. I listened, but I didn't care. When they called me and told me that the credit card had been canceled, I just laughed. When George called and said I was a terrible person for leaving Jenna and Carrie, I had to laugh even more. My lawyer actually sent me a message. Jenna called and threatened to file a stay-at-home order if I didn't contact her and come back. I called him back. Hello, this is Kurt. So my wife called you with threats. I said yes, but I wouldn't worry. If you're still paying on the house, she'll have a hard time proving it. I can do something better for you, I said. I have a recording where I tell her I'm leaving and she tells me not to come back. It's amazing. Send me a copy of it. He said, if she gives me any trouble, I'll take it to her lawyer. Let her lawyer try to force things. Thank you. I'll call you in a week to find out what's going on. I've traveled all over the Southwest. The Miata wasn't the most comfortable car, but it was fun. A lot of people looked at me. Even some of my tits flashed from bored, anxious middle-aged women. But I wasn't looking for that. After all, I was still married no matter what it took. I drove to Reno, then Lake Tahoe, the coast, Napa Valley, and Highway 1 zigzagging and zagging along the shoreline. Then I went to Yosemite, then to San Diego, through Death Valley to Vegas, and then to Phoenix. I was in no hurry. Stopped in parking lots, talked to the owners, and just chatted. Some of them were jealous that a guy in his 30s could just pick up and travel. After about three months and 8,000 miles, I decided to return to Silver City. When I arrived at the helpless auto, I was greeted by my entire team. In fact, there were several new faces. They all welcomed my return. When I entered Anna's office, formerly my office, she raised her heed. When she saw me, her smile grew even wider. She stood up, walked around her desk, and hugged me tightly. We talked for a while, and then I asked, Do you think I can invite everyone to Wranglers for food and drinks? Could you close the store at 5 Palau? At this point it was 3. You and I had a few errands to run. Of course I will insist on this. The whole team will be there. I said goodbye and told them all that I'll see you in two hours. They were in a good mood. Then I visited my lawyer. He told me earlier when I was traveling that Jenna tried to go down the abandonment route to get all my property. But he was able to thwart her efforts. We talked about what to do next. At 5Y, I met the team at Wrangler's restaurant. We had a great dinner and it was nice talking to everyone. After about an hour and a half, they began to go home. Finally, it was just Anna, and I left. She looked at me and said, You know, 
Kurt, you may think that you are helpless, vulnerable, and don't understand anything. But you're wrong. You simply trusted those you loved. I looked at her. So you got it right. Yes. It took me a while, but you said the new name would tell the whole story. This haunted me until I realized it. You may be Polish, but all these jokes can never describe the real you. These jokes are an insult to you and your roots. Thank you, Anna. You are truly the main reason for my return. I had to see how you handle my responsibilities. Happy to say that you have not filled my shoes, but rather created a pair of your own. I had an excellent mentor. She thanked. We hugged and she went home to her husband. He truly was a happy man. I returned to the apartment I had not been in for three months. It was musty here and needed good ventilation. I opened the windows and let the cool evening air fill the rooms. I grabbed a beer and sat on the terrace overlooking the pool. Several people were swimming there and a family was playing. I thought about Jenna and me. We had such high hopes and dreams when we got married. Now they have all disappeared. Looking at the clock on the wall, I saw that it was about 830. A thought flashed through my head. Looks like it's time for a showdown. I got up, jumped into my Miata and drove to my house. I guess technically it was still mine. I bought it before Jenna and I got married. And my name was the only one on the deed. I was disappointed when I pulled into the driveway. The yard was not well kept. It seemed that the landscaping had not even been touched. The light was on and I assumed Jenna was home. I went to the door and knocked. A minute later the door opened and Carrie stood there. Her eyes got big and she asked, Dad. Hi, Carrie. Is your mom home? She stuttered and then shouted, Mother. I heard Jenna shout from the kitchen in a tense, high-pitched voice. What's the matter? She continued to look at me and said loudly in response, Dad. Jenna came around the corner, saw me, and screamed, Where are you going? I decided to answer her cry in a calm, even travel. At that moment, George came out of the bedroom wearing only his underpants. Oh, I said, The whole family is here. Mom, Dad, and Child. What the hell are you talking about? Jenna spat back. I suppose George moved to take my place after all. It is rightfully his. Jenna looked at me with a puzzled expression. Carrie said he lost his apartment after you fired him and Mom needed a man to help pay the bills and take care of other responsibilities here since you left. Then the rage in her voice was palpable. Well, young lady, it appears you are misinformed. She hated it when I corrected her. George was never my employee at his insistence, so I could not fire him. As for bills, all utilities are paid, as is car insurance. What about food and gasoline? In the car? Jenna shouted. You had a job. Did you lose it? I know that before it was just your mad money, but it was enough for groceries and gasoline while I was away. So you think you'll come back and just move back? She asked. No. I'll wait until you and your lover find somewhere to live. It was obvious that they were sleeping together in my house and Carrie seemed okay with that. I'm not going to move out of my house, Jenna said. Correction. This is my house. He was mine before we got married and only my name is written on the contract. I replied. Well, you left so now he's mine. The law doesn't work that way. Since I pay the utilities and taxes, I am still the legal owner and even though I have been gone for a short period of time, I still own it. Don't worry. I'll give you lovebirds until the end of next month to find a place to live. Just make sure you take your daughter with you. What does your daughter mean? She is our daughter. You couldn't think of more truthful words. I chuckled. Jenna looked puzzled, then I said to Carrie. Carrie, I know you hate being called Polish, so I have good news for you. 
Your real father is not me, but George. The silence in the room was deafening. After a minute, Jenna meekly asked. What? Yes, Jenna. It seems that your little carelessness on your wedding day led to the appearance of a child, but not mine. But good news for you, Carrie. You can now take your real dad's last name and become Carrie. Carrie. Hmm. I wonder if maybe mom didn't insist on the name Carrie as a sign of respect for her lover. I looked at Jenna and she looked at George. He was white as a ghost. What, George, don't you want to be a dad? Well, that's a shame. Take responsibility. But look at it this way. It's just four more years and then college. Jenna and George said, almost in unison, I do not believe in that. I threw them the DNA report. See for yourself. They grabbed it, looked at it, and then both fainted. Carrie, tell the lovebirds that your mom will be served with divorce papers sometime next week, along with an eviction notice. I turned and walked away. The whole time I was gone, I wondered if this affair had been going on throughout the marriage. In fact, I wondered if she was even faithful to me. We met when she came to buy a car. George was working on a car, and we both thought it would be a great date. Did she choose me or not? I truly was helpless, ignorant, vulnerable. All this time, George laughed at me behind my back and also made polished jokes in front of my face. I returned to the apartment and drank beer. In the morning, I went to the lawyer and asked him to start processing the documents. Of course, I knew that I would have to sell the house and split the proceeds. But being a barely working person, I did not have to pay alimony or child support, especially since there was already another man in my place. At least, that's what I hoped. I love Jenna and George, too. The betrayal was incredible. It will take me a long time to trust anyone, be it a man or a woman. Maybe you should see a psychologist. As the divorce proceedings progressed, I returned to work at the car dealership. But as a salesman, I made it clear to all employees that I was no longer the boss and that I only needed one sale a week to pay the rent and buy groceries. In fact, I insisted on only one. When it came to court-mandated child support, I wanted to ensure that at the end of the month, I had no money other than my own meager living expenses. Jenna hired a lawyer. I don't know how she could afford it. Maybe he worked pro bono. He'll be surprised. They looked at my bank accounts and saw that I had spent the proceeds from the sale. They even looked at the sale itself but found nothing wrong with it. They didn't dig deep enough. I heard from my fellow salespeople that while I was away, George came in almost every day for the first two weeks and talked to Anna about getting some work. She had no problem telling him no every time. In the end, he gave up. Now he regretted never getting his ASE certification because the only job he could find was at Valvoline. Quick oil change with a salary of $13. Hope Jenna went full-time or they would have a hard time making ends meet. I contacted the realtor and informed Jenna that I was putting the house on the market in anticipation of a 50-50 split of all of our assets. She had already been served with an eviction notice, so she had to move out before the house was sold and closed. One evening there was a knock on my door. Of course it was Jenna. Opening the door. I looked at her. What do you need, Kurt? Can we talk? I don't think this is a good idea. We're in a lawsuit against each other. Come on, Kurt, it's just me here. No low ears. Can't we sit down and have a civil conversation? Yeah, I guess. But let's go to Denny's, I said. There will be witnesses. I thought to myself. I didn't trust her enough to be alone with her. We sat down in a booth at Denny's and after a couple minutes of pleasantries, I asked, Why Jenna? She looked at me, hesitated and answered. I think the simple answer is that I like both of you and I couldn't decide. So you were dating both of us at the same time? She looked down at the table. Yes. 
But George told me not to tell you anything because he knew it would ruin your personal and work relationship with him. So when I asked you to marry me, why did you say yes? Because I loved you. What about George? I asked. I loved him too. But I understood that he would never be a suitable husband. When you asked me, he and I discussed it and ended our relationship. I wanted to focus on us and the preparations for our wedding. So on our wedding day, while having sex with him, you said, I'm marrying him, but you're still my man. She started crying. Everything was wrong. Then what was it, Jenna? She hesitated and then said, I didn't want to lose him and he didn't want to lose me. Well, now you have each other and your child. By the way, she did a great job with the name? I didn't even notice until I had time to think. During the three months on the road, I didn't know Carrie wasn't yours. I really didn't. Then she looked at me and said, Kurt, I wanted to talk to you today. To tell you that I still love you. It's nice to hear from you, Jenna, but I don't think you know what love is. I loved you more than anything in the world, and obviously you can't say the same. I loved you, but I can honestly say that I don't love you anymore. I loved you with all my heart. But now I feel only contempt for you. When I said this, she looked up at me and realized that our relationship was over. There will never be us again. I had to ask her one more question. Have you ever stopped? She hesitated and then apparently decided that it didn't matter and told the truth. We never stopped. We had our lulls, but we got together, usually twice a month. I was hoping for a different answer, but I was still glad she told me the truth. One more question. What happened about a year ago that made you treat me so badly? Your attitude towards me began to change. The outward contempt was obvious. Her face turned red. Then she got a little angry. George started trying to talk me into having a threesome and not with you. I probably could have done it if you had participated. But we couldn't figure out how to do it. He kept insisting on it, and it made me resent you for something I know you would never do. I know it sounds strange, but I thought I could have my two men loving me together. And I resented you for not being the person to allow it. So you did it? I asked. No. I thought about it. But then you left, and my whole world collapsed. Well, now you can do it. Knowing that I don't care what you do doesn't bother me anymore. We both knew our time to talk was over, so I paid the bill and we walked to our cars. Four months later, we stood before a judge and he declared us divorced. George was there, too. As we were leaving, the Corthosigena said, maybe we can have a drink the old-fashioned way. Of course, I said. By this time, the animosity I felt towards the two of them had disappeared. Then I thought, this will be the last time I have to be with them. Now they can be alone. Let the pigs live in their own filth. They deserve each other. Ha! Ah, Jenna will have to get used to a lower standard of living. Okay, maybe the animosity hasn't gone away. I may be Polish, but I am a respected person. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you. And go ahead and listen to the next story. Because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.